What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Outside Interference with RRBG. Today I'm being joined by one of our repeat guests from the previous version of the show, eh, Pretty Peter Avalon. That's right. So it's my first appearance on the new show. That's right. Your mm -hmm. first appearance on Outside Interference. My debut. Your debut. Uh, how does it feel debuting? I mean, uh, is this on par with uh, what you're used to in this terms is, of interviews? This is huge for me. Big, <laughs> big deal. This is your big break. Mm -hmm. Even bigger for you. Oh, man. I mean, I don't know where I'm going to go from here. I think we should just stop now. Mm -hmm. It just goes down from here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you were at the finale of the Comedy Store Wrestling That's podcast. That's right, which, I was. Which was chaos. Uh, there was no real plan. We just got drunk and chopped. You guys chopped the shit out of me. That's right. Me, Rocky, and Paul London. Yeah. Uh, it was a good time. And then what happened was I posted a clip of that, and other wrestlers were like, they took it easy on you. Uh, let me chop you. Mm. And then uh, it's just like wrestlers to want to bully people who aren't wrestlers. Seriously, like the three of us did it. Come on, guys. I was like, I know you want to be on camera, but they invited us three. That's relax. Right. You, That's you right. earn the time eventually. So <laughs> just relax. Oh, I used to wrestle in high school. I'm not a professional wrestler, but I, I I've always wanted to. Uh, wrestling in high school was brutal. Yeah, right? they they would put you through the ringer and you get your ass whooped. Yeah. So like, if anybody thinks it's uh not difficult. It's way difficult. Very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I was in there like, I just want to suplex people. <laughs> and they're like, that's not what we do here. Like, no, wrong, wrong one. Uh, but I did a lot of that. And then, you know, I, I unfortunately got a bunch of accidents, car accidents, and uh, jumping off of stages trying to be, you know, cool backstage, uh, you know, all that stuff. And, uh, and injured myself to the point where I could not become a professional wrestler. All right. How about you, in terms of injuries? Have you ever had a devastating injury like that? I mean, I know your, your hand was an issue not too long ago. Yeah, but I, I've, nothing that's, that's like uh, made me have to stop wrestling like that um, for a little bit to get better. Uh, early on in my wrestling career, about six months into training, I had a, train, a training match, and I broke my, uh, my right arm here. You could see the scar because I had, actually I had my keys on me. I had this plate put into my arm oh my God. Uh, and taken out. So it was in my body for like eight months with six screws. Um, just to keep your forearm together? Yeah, because the, the, the break was so... I did a frog splash and I, uh, the ring that we were training was, was a piece of shit. And it, uh, it was real bad. Like the padding uh, in the middle was real worn out to the point that a lot of wood was exposed. Um, the bottom rope was broken. Uh, so we were training in a, in a, in a shit ring, um, and I had a practice match, and I got confident and uh, tried a frog splash, and I had never done one, and I tried to take care of the guy and take care of myself, and I broke my, my forearm. Uh, Did a bad job of taking care of yourself. Yeah, huh? I, I took care of him. <laughs> took care of him just fine. The funny part was that uh, after the match, because I was the finish of the match, all my trainers look at me. Uh, Scorpio Sky was one of them. He was there. Uh, and they're like, Pete, that was great. You're ready to go. We can get you on shows. And I go, no, there's no way. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, and they're like, oh, shit. Oh, and then no. it turned into a, a, an I Love Lucy bit. Um, remember when Lucy was, was pregnant and she was about to have the baby and they had this plan in, plan in, in play. And then once it was time, they all kind of just ditched her accidentally. Mm, yes. That yes, happened yes. to me. They were like, oh, we got to get you to the hospital. Let's go. And they left my ass there. <laughs> <laughs> Sky Isn't that the whole premise of Home Alone, too? <laughs> yeah. uh, shit. Uh, so it was, it was, I eventually got to the hospital and got, and got my arm fixed. Um, Did you know as soon as you landed? That, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, because I, I went to pin... I went to pin the guy, and I couldn't, like, grab his leg. I could just kind of put my arm like this, like, through it and pull it. But I couldn't, like, physically, like, grab. Mm. And I knew something was wrong. But you didn't feel the pain? Or I was broke, it, like, the nerves I were kind of, like... I broke in a couple uh, bones, and the bone break doesn't hurt, mm. which is a weird thing. It doesn't really hurt. It's, uh, it's just a weird pressure. So I felt just this weird, like, a squeeze, and then the squeeze just kind of never went away. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. And, and then the, the pain came... A lot after once yeah. all the adrenaline and everything kind of wore off. Yeah, I broke in a few bones, and uh, again, I, it's the same. I don't feel it at the moment, but I always attributed that to just the shock of the accident, or yeah. like, like the collarbone was a car accident. Oof. So 
uh, and it was bad. Like it popped out and it was stabbing me in the ch- uh, chin Oof. here like this. And yeah. I, I didn't even feel it. I was just trying to open the car door and I couldn't. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And I realized like, oh, that's what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, and the other one was, I was like, I think I was like eight or nine. I broke uh, my shin. I don't know which one it is. Fibula, tibula, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, one of those. Uh, skiing. Because I went, I decided to go skiing in New Jersey as a little kid. I did the first like little bunny slope. They teach you to do the little pizza thing. Pizza, French fry. Yeah. And then uh, they were like, oh, you're ready. So they took me up to one of the legit. The black mountain. diamond. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> and as I'm going down, I'm like, holy shit. And I, the pizza wasn't working. And you pizza when you French fry and you French fry when you pizza, man. It's a big common mistake. But it wasn't even. No, I did the thing to slow down and it wasn't slowing down. Yeah. The pizza was not working. And I saw a tree coming. And I just dove out of the way, but my leg still clipped it. Sent me flying, broke the leg, and Damn. good stuff. I still have pictures of that, uh, and I have a limp that I try to hide everywhere I walk. The <laughs> and that's why I can't pro wrestle. <laughs> the stabbing of your collarbone reminds me I broke my face in a match. What? My 10th year anniversary match at Bar Wrestling. We wrestled Crime Time. Uh, oh, well. Shad Gaspard, rest in peace. Yeah. We did something. He popped me up and punched me in the face, and... He's got a big hand, and he popped me right here in the in the zygomatic, and it popped it in. I thought he just popped me real good, so it was bruised. I didn't think my face was broken. Two weeks later, at another bar wrestling show, when I wrestled uh, in a tag match against Scorpio Sky and Eric Watts, uh, the swelling went away, but I just had this dent in my face, and I was like, shit, I have this match. I don't want to cancel. I need to make some money. Uh, so we did the match, and the next day I went to the, to the ER, and they said, yeah, your face is, is broken. When I would open my mouth like this, I could feel this bone poking me in the in the like right here, and it was just the weirdest feeling. Oh no! I had this little scar right here. Do you see it? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's where they went in and popped it out, oh, like a dent God. in a car. Well, maybe you should use that as part of your gimmick. Like you know, I wrestled a match with a broken freaking face. Broken freaking face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that guy, I mean, he was just on Joe Rogan. What's up with Joe Rogan uh, interviewing wrestlers now, huh? I thought I thought he didn't like wrestling. I thought wrestling was fake. Now he's interviewing all the wrestlers. Hey, with that with that big merger, you know, UFC and WWE, oh, one in the same. That's right. That's right. Well, we can talk about that a little bit, I guess. I mean, I have other notes about you, but since we're already talking about it, uh, the UFC and the WWE merge into TKO. I thought I was going to be a genius and buy stock in that because I figured it can only go up from there. It's already going down. My stock is going down, so... I'm losing money. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, is that a good move, you think, for, for pro wrestling? Not for the UFC, but for pro wrestling, is that a good move? I think so. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I think it, it's very in, it's interesting. Uh, it's never been done before, and I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's going to work out for them. It's a very interesting move for sure. I hope so. I don't want to see, like I hear rumors now about possibly uh, um, like a draft where they're going to bring in people from UFC to wrestle. I'm like, I don't know. They need to train a little bit. I wonder who would be good. Like, who would cross over pretty well, you know what I mean? I mean, the rumor's always been McGregor, since he's a good shit talker. He can cut a promo. He can cut a promo. But can he, uh, would he drop the work? Logan, would he, yeah, would he lay down for Logan Paul? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'd want a job for anybody, really. I don't, he doesn't cut me, he doesn't strike me as a type to put anybody over. Uh, let's see, who else? I don't know, man. Ronda. Well, yeah, Ronda did okay, I guess. A lot of people, I mean, I guess that's debatable. Some people don't like, didn't like her work, but. I like Ronda. She did good. I wish, it would be cool if, like, she got to work other places, because, like, I don't think she ever got to wrestle, like, a Marina Shafir, you know? Well, weren't they training partners? Weren't they partners? Did they wrestle the same? I don't know if they ever wrestled each other. I don't think they wrestled each other, like, on TV, but they, like, they must have trained. I mean, they were the four horsewomen of MMA. Yeah, but, like, I'm, man, if that match happened, it probably would have been sick. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. That would have been cool. I mean, Marina's doing uh, really great stuff at AEW. Yeah, she's dope. I got to have lunch with her after a blood sport, and uh, she's one of the coolest people I've met. I like Marina, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Going back to to that merger thing, man, I mean, I don't know. Uh, There's the other side of the token. Could there be a a pro wrestler that can legitimately go MMA, like Nakamura maybe or something like Uh, that? He's fought MMA, I think. Yeah, he's got – he has a few matches. He's got belts in certain art forms. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm just hoping it doesn't affect the fan base to where – like. me personally, I have a lot of friends that watch just UFC. They don't watch pro wrestling, and they give me shit. They're like, "How can you watch pro wrestling when the UFC exists?" 
And I'm like, well, because it's two different things, man. Do they only watch documentaries? <laughs> yeah, right. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, come on. These are the same people that are like, oh, it's fake. It's like, yes, so is Game of Thrones. Yes. Like, Star what? Wars <laughs> is <laughs> fiction. Yeah, no, I have a lightsaber at home. I'm sure, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's, it's just weird. I, but that's my concern is the fan base. I hope it doesn't start, like, pushing people away where they're like, oh, well, now the UFC is fake. Or, you know, whatever that, you know, or, or dumb pro wrestling marks that are going to be like, oh, the UFC people aren't real wrestlers and they're going to come in here and ruin the product. I think, though, it works out for UFC uh, TKO, because if you have these people who are fighting each of them and they're like fanboys, it's like, no, nah, F them. We're going to spend our money over here. At the end of the day, TKO's getting paid. At the end of the day, yes. Yeah, you know I mean, so I, that's the best way is to have your your uh, your brands fight like we're Burger King and Popeyes having competing uh, chicken sandwiches, and they're owned by the same same mother company. Like pretty much, pretty yeah, that's the much. way to do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm I'm hoping it's good. Uh, not just because I have stock in there, but also because I'm a fan of both. I'm yeah. I'm one of those rare fans of both uh, sports. So I I'm I'm hoping it it just elevates everyone. And and by elevating everyone, I even mean other companies like. We're in a weird time right now. Look at what AEW is doing, putting on that show in, in Wembley Stadium. Yeah, like, it's impressive. That's that's huge, and we've never had that before. Where there's another company outselling at that level at that level. Yeah, there's been so much attempt at it, like uh, in, with TNA and a few other companies in between, but no one's been able to do it as successfully as AEW. Man, yeah. How how are you? Uh, did you go to Wembley? No, you didn't go. You didn't go. They didn't send you. No, out I there. did not go to Wembley Stadium. Damn you, TK! How I dare did, you? I did not go to Wembley Stadium. That's unfortunate. <laughs> uh, I was uh, I was there in spirit though. There was fans there with signs, fans tagging me and stuff. So shout out to them for uh, bringing me in spirit. Well, I figured it'd maybe like fly you out there just in case somebody like if there was an injury or something, they could pop you in. You know? Hey, you know. Uh, get your shit together over there, guys. No, <laughs> well, I do, I do want to talk to you about that a little bit. Like last time I saw you on TV, you were uh, up against the trios champs, the current trios champs. Oh yeah, uh, the acclaimed, the assmen, the assmen, <laughs> the scissoring asses, the scissoring asses. Yes. <laughs> uh, but you were tagged with uh, Truth Magnum and Turbo Floyd, which no disrespect, never heard of them. The Outrunners, baby. Never had heard of them. They're something. They're You've s- heard of them now. They're something. That, They're great. What, what, how did that pairing come about? Like, I, I haven't seen you with them before. Uh, they, just, <laughs> they just threw us together, honestly, to be honest. Oh, okay. uh, but I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I like them. They're funny. Uh, and they are committed to that gimmick, man. It's so good. They're out there flexing and spinning. And uh, they got the great facial hair and the, the great outfits. I, great colors. I love the, the uh, what's that aesthetic? The... Uh, 90s 80s uh man i forgot i had the word uh the vapor vapor, vapor wave, wave or something like wave. that yeah they got a, a good aesthetic and they're a lot of fun they're a good team is that something you would like to do more of with them like because I, I mean no. what's going on with the wingmen and all that well it's just me and ryan nemeth uh oh. the wingmen the wing the wing lads the wing duo the wing boys uh the wing boys the handsome hunks uh, <laughs> <laughs> so hey maybe the four of us why not we'll yeah. go out to Get a steak dinner I feel like something. something needs to happen. You guys always put on a great show. I, I mean, agree. they have you up there, you know, with the champs for a reason. Mm-hmm. They're not just going to put any jabrones up there. Uh, so it was a uh, uh, young Pete was uh, was excited when he took a famouser because when I was backyard wrestling, when I was in like fifth, sixth grade, uh, getting in trouble at school playing wrestling on the on the on the field, I was always doing famouser. Oh, someone's ringing. Oh, boy. I was always doing the famous sir to the other wrestlers. So that was my move. So to take it was like, all right, here we go. Full circle. Yeah, I was going to say, how, how was it like being in the ring with Billy Gunn in 2023? Like, it's Billy, pretty wild. It's not the first time I've been in the ring with Billy, but it was, uh, it's was. it been a while since I've been in there with Billy. And uh, it's something, man. He's incredible. Was this your first time, like, in a big setting televised? Because I know like, he used to do some, like, local stuff here. We did early, uh, early darks. Because mm. it, it was uh, me and... Sean Spears against him and Austin Gunn, and I was a librarian still. And in my librarian promo, I called Austin the ass boy mm. way before Mr. Dan Housen. Mm. And then we had ass boy chants going and blah, blah, blah. And then uh, fast forward, Colton's here and 
Bullet Club. Now they're Bullet Club Gold, which I got to say, it's a good move and it makes perfect sense to me. Just I dig with their it. Na- their names, guns. Like their entrance is cool, is cool as hell, oh, too. Oh, I love it. That song is the best. Yeah. It's an 8-bit kind of, you know. It's cool. Vapory wavy, too. A <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty wild. And also, you know. Uh, you see what happens, Dan Housen, when you steal from my boy. Now he hasn't been on TV. Where, where's Dan Housen at? Oh, I think he's hurt. He was on TV though. <laughs> he was on TV against the champs. Where are you at? No, yeah, he is hurt. I feel I bad. Hurt, yeah. Get better soon. Dan, uh, please get better soon. Get better soon. Uh, so okay, what what needs to happen? Do you think for you and inter- like? Do you think it needs to be a gimmick change? Like. How do we get you into where you're not being looked at, like just paired up with randoms and stuff like that that you've never worked with? What do we need to do, man? What do we get? You, how do we get you into the main event picture? That's a question for uh, creative. Creative. Get, uh, creative, because I've suggested creative, and it goes unheard. But it's okay. It's ah, okay. 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 Well, you also did uh, with your boy Ryan uh, uh, the, that big old battle royal tag team battle thing, mm-hmm. which they've been doing a lot of. I mean, are you going to keep it going with with Ryan? I mean, there are rumors that his brother might be joining the foray. Ooh, well, he could be the third wingman. Ah, there you go. Well, you all could be like the Hollywood hunks because you know you're you're pretty Peter, you're That's hunky. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, Hollywood hunk is hunky, and mm-hmm. uh, Ryan's okay. Or not Ryan. Uh, Nick is okay. I don't want to give him too much credit. I don't want to make his head bigger than it is. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, the, the Internet's going crazy because uh, Ryan posted that picture of him and Nick uh, holding all the belts, oh. uh, all the AEW belts. Interesting. I don't have a Twitter anymore, so I don't know ah. about this. He does. Well, that funny thing. Ryan doesn't have an Instagram anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> After Elon Musk took away my verification and then well, you don't want to pay the eight bucks. I don't want to pay eight bucks. And then now there's rumors of what that everyone's going to have to pay for it. It's like, yeah. why am I going to go on this platform that he ruined? He fired all these. He fired his entire staff. And he's just he uh, renamed it to X. Well, excrement <clears throat> is what it is. Uh, excrement. Yeah, excrement. But it's still. But Twitter.com still works. Of course. It's not X.com because yeah, that'll course. be probably take you to some porn. Well, uh, if you type in X. X videos would probably be the first thing to pop up on Elon's address bar, but who knows? I'm nodding. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what X videos is. <laughs> I. It's a whole other conversation. <laughs> that's a yeah. That's a whole other. Let's not get into the porn industry. Um. So uh, I never got a chance to ask you last time you were on the show, but uh, you also, I mean, when I look at your Instagram, one of the earlier pictures or not earlier uh recent pictures is you chopping the shit out of jericho what was it like being in the ring with jericho jericho's a, a pro 100 percent, and uh that match happened because of jericho he got it to happen oh yeah uh, otherwise it would have been a backstage segment to set up him and ricky starks mm. so uh jericho i appreciate him for uh, a lot that he's done for me i got to be on his uh podcast early on as the librarian mm. um so jericho's done a lot for me and i think uh chris is a great dude and oh. he's a hell of a wrestler. I mean, I grew up watching him. I was a big Y2J guy. Uh, him coming in with the with the countdown and everything was was super cool because uh, I was a WWF fanboy. I didn't go back and forth and flip channels. I just watched one. Uh, when I would try to watch WCW, I'd be like, ah, you know. Mm-hmm. But then for him to come over, I was like, oh, this is a big deal. This is cool. So uh, big fan, and I appreciate him. Definitely. And being on his cruises were, were super cool to work those. I've been on two of them. Uh, those I've been blast. dying to get on one of those cruises. Uh, Jericho, come on, bro. Chris. Music and wrestling mm-hmm. right here, personified. Let's go. Uh, I'd love to do one of those cruises. That, that, they, look, they look like a lot of fun. I think, uh, I think my boy Johnny LaQuasto is doing comedy on the, on the next one. Nice. I think so, so. I know Brad Williams has done it a few times. He did He's the last it. one. Yeah. Uh, my boy Ryan Niemiller did one. Uh, that's a good time. Awesome. Yeah, my buddies, all my Florida buddies, uh, I used to do a lot of stage production in Florida, and they are the ones doing the stage production for those cruises. Super cool. So I know I can get on the cruise. I just want to do it in a professional manner. Yes. I don't want to just sneak onto the boat. Yes. <laughs> be on the list. Yeah, I just want to be a part of it. Um, the list. No, that list. See? Yeah, I was like you. I was also a WWE mark. I never really watched WCW. So even when Jericho came over, I didn't know who he was. 
they did I a heard. good job at hyping a lot of those dudes that did the the crossover because I didn't know who they were at all, but they made him like such a big deal that I was like, oh, of course, how do I not know who this guy is? Right. You know, yeah. him, the radicals, like, yeah, yeah, know? yeah. I mean, Earl likes to point out sometimes that they they botched uh, Booker T or that they buried him immediately upon arrival. Man. But I don't know. I don't. I don't even think that was. Like, yes, the Rock looking at him and saying, you know, and who are you? Like, it's the Rock. Of course, he's gonna say that. I don't think that's a burial. Yeah, I mean, that was always his thing, right? Who in the blue hell? Yeah. Are you like, or whatever? yeah. <laughs> who is this Rudy Poo? Speaking yeah. of the Rock, the Rock recently showed up at SmackDown. Uh, I made a post about it. If it was him and John Cena, it's like. Tell me there's an actor strike without telling me there's an actor strike. Uh, obviously, some people are out of work. I found it very interesting that The Rock came back to interact with Grayson Waller, uh, of all people, instead of interacting with his family. Grayson Waller also got John Cena when he came back, too. That's true. Yeah. Obviously, some people like Grayson Waller over yeah. there, giving him that big time rub. Yeah, good for him. Yeah. But... What 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 did you think about the Rock coming back? I mean, do you think it was a successful thing with with Grayson Waller, or do you think it would have served better uh, if he would have been involved with like more of the Bloodline stuff? I'll be honest, I didn't see it. Oh, okay. I just saw like pictures, but I'm sure it's I'm sure it's cool. Uh, the Rock was always fun to listen to. He can't really say any of the stuff that got him over originally. So, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. some hey. of that old footage uh, keeps popping up on my feet. It's like, oof. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Let's go listen to him talk to Jonathan Coachman and Kevin Kelly. And, you know, like. Yeah, it's why I don't, you know, a lot of people, they would bring up his name with like presidential candidacy. Like, oh, we want The Rock to be the president. It's like, that'll never happen. Man. First debate or like, you know, uh, op- opposing campaign. It's all that footage. Yeah. All of that footage when he was talking to him, like making fun of the Chinese, I believe it was at one point. Like, yeah, come yeah. on, bro, yeah. it's not gonna go over well. But I mean, it'd be it'd be something like at any of the Rock's rallies, he's just giving out strudel <laughs> <laughs> or pie. Yeah, like, well, yeah, 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 yeah. A little piece of pie, like yeah. Rudy Poos. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that would be a good move for him. I I'm glad to see him on TV, but I, you know, now the whole conversation is, oh, it's going to be him and Roman at WrestleMania 40. Uh, if they do that, I don't want it to be for the title. I really don't want any championships around The Rock. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need to be involved in it. You know, people like, I don't know, uh, any of the upcoming, like LA Knight, or Cody Rhodes, any of that m- need it more than The Rock, I think, at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they put it on him, it would just be for, uh, you know, the image of the company, right? Like, they, I think they've done it before. For Like, they put the, you know. When they took, uh, when, when Goldberg at age 50-something took the belt from Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's happened before. My God. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, going back to some of, some of your stuff, you've been wrestling a lot more in uh, ROH. And I wanted to ask you, like, is there a difference? Like, do you feel a difference between wrestling and ROH outside of, like, the initial handshake? I was going to say it's just the handshake. Is there any other difference, like, between an ROH taping and, say, a Dynamite or a Rampage? No, it's it's, uh, the first Ring of Honor was done at a, that I did was at a Orlando, and that was similar to a a dark Hmm. tape. And then they do Ring of Honor uh, before and after the dynamite and collision tapings. Um, so no, it's, it's the same. It's just, you know, you shake hands, uh, but it's a lot of fun. It's cool. Now I never worked ring of honor originally. So now to be able to kind of check it off my list, uh, cause I worked PWG early on. I was a fixture at PWG for a few years and that was always like ring of honor over the West coast kind of right. thing, you know? Right. So it's like, it's cool to be able to now I've checked off both boxes. Is there a title in ROH that you want to go after? Man, did the, uh, Besides the world title, do you have one besides the world title? Yeah, the, the one that Samoa the Joe title. has. Yeah, I'll go for the TV title. I always wanted to be a te- television champion, so Samoan Joseph. Let's the, go. Let's do this. The other Samoan Joseph. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm excited to see the match. Uh, he's got a match tonight, I believe, with uh, uh, Eddie Kingston. Oh, that should be a good one. It's him and Eddie Kingston yeah. for... No, wait, that's, am I wrong? That's not Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston's going up against Claudio. Oh, that should be a good one, too. It's Claudio, Eddie Kingston, and they're doing the title for title, uh, the New Japan Strong title mm-hmm. ver- and the uh, Ring of Honor World title, mm-hmm. which, to me, I don't think people are realizing... I mean, I know that people are stoked about the feud that they have, but uh, I'm more just excited about the implications. Like, 
that means either Eddie becomes Ring of Honor World Champion, which is huge for Eddie, or Claudio becomes a New Japan Champion and gets to wrestle in New Japan, which is also huge because yeah. I don't think he's ever been over there. That's a big deal. I don't know. I think that's a that to me that's match of the night. I know there's other that's matches on the card, match, but yeah. for you, it's, in, oh, it's Joe and MJF. Joe and MJF. That's what it is because yeah. of the whole their feud about the shoving. Uh, when Joe yeah, shoved the, him the in NXT, to the backstage bit—that's yeah, <laughs> that's the premise of the entire feud. Hey, that's good. That is. I've always callback. thought like, why haven't they, you know, worked on that since the, it is a viral clip. Yeah, good callback. Yeah, it's a good callback. Uh, speaking of New Japan Strong, with you, you were on a run there. I challenged for that championship when it was under when it was with uh, when Fred Rosser was champion. Right. So Fred Rosser had to beat me, and then he lost it to Kenta. I mean, so like, you know. That's a that's, that's high a price. big deal. Like our, I gave him a hard fought fight. We went longer. We went like 12, 13 minutes, something like that. It's online. I kicked his ass. He kicked my ass. So I'm a contender. And you were undefeated. I was until that match. Until that match. Yeah, I, I, I knocked off a couple people. So I got my match in there. Uh, Come on, creative. I could. I am championship material. I have gone after the strong championship. I went after the NWA heavyweight championship when Nick Aldis was a champion. Came up short then too. But I mean, I've challenged for some real stuff. I'm a real wrestler. I'm a, I'm a bad motherfucker. That's right. I've seen him. I've seen him for years here in the local scene. I'm just real good at making people chuckle, though. Yeah, it's it's it. Look, that's a it's a it's what do you call that? Uh, double double edged sword. You where know? you're good at comedy, they're gonna people are gonna want that, but like. It's hard to kind of break free from that, uh, that that stigma. Like, look at look at Sami Zayn. You know, he went from working with Johnny Knoxville and getting caught in a giant mouse trap. That was great, though. It was hilarious. That was great, but so good. but afterwards, I was like, well, he's done. Oh. Like, he's just got comedy from now on. And but then somehow pulled himself completely out to where he's main eventing with Roman Reigns. He's he's dynamic, man. He's so dynamic. I see you in that same way. I'm, Who, I'm dynamic. I can do it. Who in AEW is your tribal chief to pull you out and, 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 and kind of elevate you to that point? Maybe got I got to fight Eddie Kingston. There you go. I've if Kingston wins, then he'll have both those titles. That's where you come in. Because mm-hmm. you've challenged for New Japan Strong. I'll just, I just need another chance. I'll take it the second time. There you go. It was the, first, it was the nervous jitters the first time. And as cool as it is to win two belts like that, though, like now we have to figure out how he's going to drop one of them because he's going to have to drop one of them. He can't, they can't have dropping both or of them all the just, time. What is it, they or make, unify they, it? Yeah. They might, right? Because they canceled New Japan, like the tapings in LA. In LA so. Yeah. So I could see them doing that too. Ah, that sucks. I don't want that. I want, more, I want more New Japan stuff. Strong was a fun show. That was a good show. Uh, any aspirations to go to Japan? Like oh yeah, do absolutely. more. I would Japan? love to do uh, whoever. I've reached out to Noah. I've reached out to DDT. So let's make it happen. Reach out to the person who was in the finale of Comedy Store Wrestling with you. Oh, oh trust me, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's the guy. Mm-hmm. I think there's plenty of. He might text. send you to Mexico though for a few. That's fine. I was, uh, when I was training in Mexico uh, last year, I went to a CMLL show. Uh, it's incredible. It was incredible. Him, he was on it. Matt Taven was on it. Kenny King was on it. Uh, it was great. It was he great. Can, he's like living out there now. Who? <laughs> Rocky? Rocky? Oh yeah, he's back and forth. Every sure. time I every time I text him, like I texted him uh, to come tonight to this uh, comedy show, and he's like, "I'm still in Mexico." You bro. got a response? Oh, I did. I did. Rocky. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm just. Uh... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I understand. I understand. Yeah, no, he's like, I'm still in Mexico, brother. I'm like, fuck, do you live there now? What the hell, man? Uh, but yeah, it'd be cool to see you in CMLO. Yeah, I would love to. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at Lucha. I yeah. work Lucha Vavoom around here all the time. They have a show coming up, right? Friday. Are you on it? I am not. I am actually a part of a bachelor party that weekend f- with my sister's fiance and his group of friends. So. Are you going to wrestle on that? Uh, if, they, if they get a little rowdy, I'm going to have to body slam those, those fools. Throw someone through a table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be a little nice guy, you know, brother of the bride, all right? So, okay, we were talking about, you know, you're good at people making people laugh. Mm-hmm. But you personally, internally, like, do you want to move away from the comedy or do you want to keep it and have it be like a kind of back and forth? Like, where, where do you see yourself in a couple years? 
man, I, I could do it all. So it's just wherever, uh, wherever we can figure out what to do. Cause it's always just thinking of ideas and seeing what sticks. So like, uh, you could be you could be a serious person who's just kind of is humorous, or like you could be a comedic wrestler like a Santino Morella. It's mm. just you know, got to we all got to figure it out, including myself. Talking about Santino, he's he's back around doing stuff at Impact. I think sure, sure, yeah, I guess yeah, he's bringing out the snake. I haven't watched Impact Wrestling since I was a part of it. If when I'm was being that? real, uh, North Fernham back in 2015. <laughs> Oh, I always want to give them a shot because like, oh, wait, no, I worked for them as Peter Avalon. I wrestled Jordan Clearwater a few years later because they did a they were touring and they came out here and they reached out to United Wrestling Network for their entire uh, staff because they needed people to put on the show and everything for them. So uh, I did the opening match against Jordan Clearwater and got a victory. So I wrestled for Impact as Norf Hernum. And Peter Avalon. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And P.P. Ray. I did my tag team there the night before. Um, I think I we lost to Watts and Chris Bay. He was not Bullet Club yet. Ah, okay. No. Okay. Yeah, I, I've, I, so often I try to give Impact a shot. Because like, I'll see... On the you know on the stream like on the feeds I'll see like uh, a match that's like oh wow okay they got some pretty interesting you know talent on the card but Ooh. it's just I don't know I it's mostly because <laughs> I it's, like, it's mostly because I don't have the it's the, hard to the watch channel yeah but it's I, not an easy to find yeah that's the only thing. thing it's not me being like malicious f them it's just I don't have the channel but the little things I've seen. Uh, I it's good it's been cool and then uh what everyone tells me is that they have some of the better storytelling going sometimes so it's like oh it's interesting. Is Bully Ray's out there now I think. I think Bully Ray's been there for a minute. Yeah, because when I was Nor Furnham there he was there. Hmm. Yeah. No, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I can't. I just I can't, like you said. I can't find it. Yeah. And I'm not gonna put that. There's already too much fucking wrestling to watch. <laughs> uh, I have to watch. You know, four different shows from AEW and all the WWE stuff and New Japan and then people sending me stuff from like local clips. I'm like, I, you don't know about this guy? Like, no, I'm sorry. There's a thousand million wrestlers. I don't. Oh. Do you feel that there is too much wrestling? Because I know it's your it's your your career and and everything, but is it oversaturated now? Do you feel about? Do you feel that for comedy? Sometimes. All I right. do. I feel like there's too many comedians. There's a lot of people that think they're comedians that are not, you know, they're not. I can see that. Yeah, it's just, you know, uh, as, it's probably similar. It's the same with wrestling, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say it's like a yes and a no, you know. Like, there's always more the merrier, more the merrier. The more people are making money, the better. Mm. Uh, but I, when there's too much, it's, you know, sometimes it's hard to, to keep up, like you said, or... There's a lot more bad than good, but at the same right. time, it's just because there's gonna be more bad than good because of how much is put out every week. Mm. Like with with comedy, you know, I'm sure there's guys who are doing multiple sets, different places every week. I'm sure not every set's gonna be good. Yeah, you know, uh, same with the wrestling. You know, yeah, and everybody, you know, uh, uh, people are getting too smartened up with uh, comedy, where like all I gotta do is put up a microphone and people will show up. Kind of like what I'm doing here tonight. Hey, with the, same with the wrestling. I just got to put up a ring. Yeah, just, yeah. No, you don't even need a ring sometimes. Yeah, you just, just, you just bar just, wrestling. <laughs> there you go, yeah. yeah. 400 bucks will rent you a ring sometimes, so there you go. Hey, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. I might rent, rent, rent one of those rings for myself. Anyway, um, but yeah, I, it, you know, it happens in music too. Like There was a time period when, when Guitar Hero uh, was a thing and that other game, Rock Band, Yeah. Uh, everybody thought they were a fucking musician. Everybody and 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 they were like, oh, the more the merrier. But you know what? Not everybody needs to be doing that. I think a lot of that comes with the internet too, because you could just YouTube how to do stuff, and yeah. then you are now that. Like, you know, you don't really have to go to an academy or anything. Like uh, wrestling, still kind of you have to go to a school. Uh, but there's so much online that you kind of already can go to a school, and you've already got a kind of a start because you. <laughs> I remember back in the day, I uh, I downloaded the UPW. Uh, training VHSs, and uh, that was like the only thing I could find that was like how to wrestle. Uh, but now you can just go on YouTube, and Santino Brothers has an ent has years worth of content on different moves in this, and then so do other other companies uh, that are doing it too. And 
Uh, I'm just, same with comedy. You know, you could just go and re, uh, watch a couple of how-to videos. You could find a Wikipedia that has how-to. Uh, I remember finding with a Wikipedia of like the wrestling terms. You know what I mean? Oh and some of those God. terms I've never heard in my <laughs> time as wrestling. You know. And, Whatever. What do you feel? Uh, how do you feel about like the the fans knowing too much of the inside terms like that? Like you know, taking a powder. And Sometimes it's that. annoying because it's when stuff gets used incorrectly. My favorite at lately has been the word receipt because nobody knows what a receipt is. <laughs> you know, so it's like uh, Ed- educate them. What's a receipt? It's tit for tat. You hit me too hard, I hit you back too hard. You know what I mean? Mm. But it's like it's just it's it's within the confines of the match, and it's you know it's not most of the time it's not really a fuck you thing. You know, it's right. just like. It is what it is. You What's know? have you? Do you have a favorite receipt that's been televised that you've seen? Because I do. What's yours? <laughs> no, I don't have one. No. Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. Oh, you know what? That is a good one, <laughs> brother. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. Slow down. Wow. Yeah, like, that is- oh shit. <laughs> I mean. I'm sure Braun was nervous. He's of in there course. with a legitimate killer. You know of course, I mean, you know? yeah. Big ass dude, and he's the biggest dude in the match, and he could still just easily get his ass whooped. You know, what right, I mean? I'm sure right, he's right. not really ever been in a situation like that. I'm the biggest guy in the in this in the room in this entire arena, and I can easily get my ass whooped. Yeah, you that's know? A, that's an odd feeling. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure. And to get be able to get tossed around by a, a beast of Brock. And if he was to get one legit on Brock, Brock would probably just wipe it off and just keep going. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him in actual MMA fights, so I mean, we were talking about that merger. Like, that that's one of their biggest crossover stars we've seen. I think he is the biggest. He's the biggest. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Oh, so do you have a receipt? Another one? Uh, that's yeah. the only one I could think of. I can't think of any <laughs> at the top of my head right now. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. There's, we were talking about the biggest guy in the room kind of scenario, and we're not going to talk about one of the scenarios that's been kind of the top story in all wrestling podcasts around the world. Um, but I, I, I recently spoke to someone about that whole scenario, and I, I'm pretty sure you know what we're talking about uh, or what I'm talking about. But I, in terms of, you don't have to name names, but people backstage behaving in certain manners uh like I, my the example i brought up to mine was josh barnett mm-hmm. josh barnett's a really good friend of mine i love josh and anytime he's in a room even if there's people acting up there's always a sense of calm he knows that he can kill everyone in the room yeah he's a killer and therefore it brings about this kind of like calm down thank goodness relax don't you know what i mean yeah how do you feel in terms of, of that kind of behavior, like people that act up backstage? Like, do you think uh, handling it like receipts? Do you think receipts are necessary, or do you think more of a, a calm approach? Like, hey, let's just move on. Like, what do you find more respectful? Uh, anytime I've been in situations, and it's just a conversation. Yeah. Kind of, you know, you just have a conversation. Uh, that's what I would think. You know, I you know think, like, just yeah. talk it out. Because I, I hear that, and then some people defend that kind of behavior of like, oh, no, fuck them. Fuck those people. I yeah, also don't know uh, sometimes particulars of certain instances. You know, well, there's that too. Yeah, anytime that I have been in, in any situation that is uh, uh, it's a conversation, it's, it's done uh, calm, and then afterwards, it's, you know, you shake hands and everything. But that was a different circumstance leading up to it you know what i mean Stuff like and that. i think a lot of it has like we mentioned the internet you know bringing about an oversaturation but another thing that it brings is over dramatization of everything everything is a story everything is a dirt sheet story and everything oh he said she said or, oh this guy this happened and that happened well, yeah, and this- real journalism doesn't exist anymore it's all gonzo journalism so you have a bunch of people that are making it uh Bigger than it is, and it's like it probably just had a conversation, but oh, it's blown out of proportion, you know. How do we control that? I mean, shouldn't you there don't. be shouldn't there be some kind of like regulation in terms of, of journalism at least, where it's not just made up bullshit? I don't. I think that it falls on the journalists. Like that's just been an issue in just real journalism, <clears throat> like on the on the on media and the news, and you know, it's just a generation we're in. No one wants to watch a boring regular news. They want you know something drama, dramatic. Drama. drama. Well, and it is. It up and drama. And he said, she said, drama. Well, isn't that TNT's like motto? 
like yeah, we want drama. Was it no? It's something drama. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> Home of drama. I don't <laughs> yeah. know, uh, but it's it's. I don't know, man. I I want. I think it's harming the business, but a lot of people they give me the other side of the argument where. The drama, the the he said, she said, the blah, 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 is the new kayfabe. It's the new, we don't know what's real. We don't know if that's, and it makes it interesting again. That's uh, that's, the whole, that's the only thing that it ever kind of bugs me is when, like, I don't have a, a comment on any of the stuff that's actually happened because I'm not a part of, I haven't been a part of it. Uh, it just, it is what it is. That's, 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 that. it's just, I... I get bummed when that stuff supersedes the story, any like the, of the, the story that the is trying to be written because it's like, man, these guys work hard uh, writing these stories. As, as someone who's written wrestling before, I, I write Derby City Wrestling in Louisville, Kentucky. I used to write Championship Wrestling from Arizona in Phoenix, Arizona. I helped to write Championship Wrestling out here in L.A. And since I'm writing local local stuff, I have to kind of write stuff for the market. So the stories I'm writing in Phoenix are going to be different than the stories I write in Louisville because I have to learn about what they like out there and what they like in Phoenix and what they like out here and then, you know, try to try to tweak things for certain markets. And then when that just completely gets ignored because some this happened over here, some drama, it's like, it's frustrating, you know? It's super, that's the frustrating part because there's a lot of hard work that goes into that writing and to get that writing over by the performers. Right, right. And because that's the thing, it's not just writing, it's the performing of the yeah, writing as yeah. well. Yeah, I, I, I agree, man. It's one of those things like, why are we worried about that? And, but that's the culture. That's all of all of pop culture. I mean, yeah, it, nobody cares that, you know, Taylor Swift performed a whole week in L.A. and it all went fine. They care if like she yelled at one person backstage or, you know, something happened or somebody didn't get their autograph. Like, that's the story. Not the fact that she performed a full week yeah. of sold out shows in SoFi. No, that's not the story. Yeah, uh, it's just weird. I'm not a fan of, of where we're headed in, in that direction as a society. But that's me being an old man yelling at the clouds. You know, <laughs> what can we do about that? Um, so oh, tell me a little bit about writing wrestling, because that's one of the biggest appeals to me is the storytelling and, and what I use as a as a hook to get people into watching pro wrestling. So when you're telling a story in, in pro wrestling, Outside of the typical, like, here's a big guy, here's a small guy, and it's the, 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 you know, the small guy trying to, the David and Goliath story. What are some other, like, big story, I guess, elements that you can put into a story for pro wrestling? Outside of just big guy, I mean, overcoming the big guy. It's an interesting story because it's relatable to, to people, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, a, it's a story that's already told because it's David and Goliath. It's just how do you, how do you kind of retell retell that story interesting thing with wrestling too is since you have such a, a long timeline sometimes with people you can go and reference stuff that happened 20 years ago and bring it to the forefront uh, really the only other places that can do that is like a soap opera mm. you know what i mean like what general hospital could probably reference something in its early days you know because it's been on for so long uh but that's like the like Dominic Mysterio calling himself Eddie Guerrero and the crowd, some of the crowd popped, you know what I mean? That's, that's an angle when he was a little boy, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's like what, 20 years in the May in the brewing to get that angle over. That's wild. Uh, like you referenced earlier, Samoa Joe and MJF, like mm. had that promo never happened at WWE years prior when MJF was coming up, then that, this angle might not have, uh, the legs to it. You know what I mean? Um, uh, that's the beauty of pro wrestling. That's the beauty of pro wrestling. It, it, it goes past uh, companies. It's, yeah. It, this is something that started in NXT and it's now come to fruition in AEW. There's so many different layers of pro wrestling uh, that, that, you can, that you can play with. Uh, you know, uh, you can referencing CM Punk's uh, fight lineage and stuff like that. Like you can, you can reference, you could do different things. Samoa Joe wrestling here and uh, stuff like that. There's so much cool stuff you could do. Uh, uh, you can reference, they're referencing the Young Bucks in PWG and uh, different things. Even like, Sammy and KO are wearing the PWG logo. Yeah, on their pants. so you could tell different stories like that. You could tell, you can come and reference stuff. And then uh, writing wrestling is, is just, it's, sometimes it's trial and error. You see what works, what doesn't work. Uh, sometimes you're surprised at what works. Mm. Like, uh, uh, Perry Saturn with the mop that was a that was that was supposed to be a punishment to him but then it ended up being over and going on for for a while and uh it, and it was hilarious and real good and like you know yeah yeah it's uh yeah I mean you you, ne you 
definitely don't know what's going to work until you do it. Yeah. Like, look at what was it, Jake Hager with the hat, the purple hat. The like, hat got the, over What yeah. the fuck? And now, like, in 10 years, you can go and reference the hat in some way, and people be like, oh, that's right, he wore a hat. Yeah, yeah. now when he, you know, because I think the JAS broke up, so if he does, like, a solo run, if that hat ever makes an appearance, the whole place is going to go crazy. How many times has Chris Jericho reinvented himself? Oh, my goodness. You know, but then how he's able to go back and reference prior gimmicks. Like, he, anytime he has something, he can raise a pen, and people go, oh, shit, the list, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's... That's, that's huge, man. Not, there's not a lot of people that can that could do something like that in different mediums. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah that's it's, something. That it's something. It's something. Wrestling, yeah, storytelling and wrestling is is something, and it's uh, if, to emulate sport. Um, because the we've all if if you like sports you know the drama behind sports when it's real like a neck and neck game it's like you people are into it like oh shit and that's just real when you could get that out of something that's not quite real that's to me is a testament to how good the performers are because it's it's not real yeah you know and you're able to get people real reactions out of people to act like this is a this is a World Cup game you know it's it's something it's really something it's hard and it's also something hard to. I like that it's hard to explain to some people because some people don't see that in pro wrestling. They see, they see the fake part. They don't see the what we're trying to do with that. We're trying to, you know, convey this this entire story. Try to make it look as real as possible too. What are your thoughts on on the realism in in pro wrestling? Do you prefer? Like uh, like a New Japan where they're just fucking smacking each other in the face as hard as possible, uh, where it is real, or do you want more of a safer work environment where people will last longer, have longer careers? Like, it, it's a topic that that gets brought up a lot. Like, do you prefer like a Darby Allen throwing himself out of the ring at full speed and maybe not having a career when he's in his forties, or do you want a Ric Flair wrestling into the seventies? I want it all. I like a variety. <laughs> uh, I know that's a cop out answer, but that's, that's the wrestling I liked. I liked the attitude era, which had a bunch of everything. And then, excuse me, uh, PWG, uh, in like the late two thousands had a real good, uh, thing going. They had comedy guys like Kikutaru, oh, funniest Kikutaru. wrestler in the world. They put him in there. They, uh, They'd bring in the hard-hitting dudes. They'd have the dudes in from Japan, uh, whether they were like the hard-hitting guys or it was the Dragon Gate guys doing these crazy, crazy uh, Japan lucha hybrid stuff. Uh, uh, you know, Roderick Strong breaking backs. They'd get uh, Brian Danielson in there, uh, Shima. Uh, just such a variety. You had the different tag teams. I remember the Cutler brothers were there wrestling the Young Bucks, and they're doing the insane, insane stuff, insane acrobatic stuff. You know, so it's like a, a variety show because I want to see it all. I don't know if I want to see one show that's one style because, like, it's cool to see uh, a Darby Allen. He's doing like a Mick Foley thing where he's ruining his body doing some <laughs> shit. But then I don't want to see that the entire show because then right. that's going to destroy potentially the appeal of a Darby Allen. That's true. You know, That's Mick true. Foley was the only one to go off the, the hell in a cell. Had everyone done that, it's like, well, shit, this is all right. Well, you know. Yeah, I guess it's not that dramatic. Yeah, I guess it's not that big of a deal or something, you know. Uh, so I like I liked the variety show aspect of, uh, of pro wrestling. That's no. what I like. Yeah. I'm with you on that. A lot of people like to be, you know, tribalistic or elitist in that sense. We're like, oh, it should go back to chain wrestling only. It's like, mm. there's time for that that I absolutely adore. Like, yeah. uh, uh, I think it was Claudio Castagnoli and uh, uh, Danielson had a headlock at the infamous headlock match in PWG. And I think they just grappled and worked a headlock the entire time. And it was amazing. Like, you know. But that's a very, it's amazing to you and to me because we appreciate that. But I, I can see, it's kind of like a UFC fight where if it's like a point fight where they're not really going for a knockout and they're yeah. just kind of like grappling on the floor for a while, everybody's yeah. like, boo! No, for sure, for I'm sure. bored. I, a, a, <laughs> lot of, a lot of wrestlers, uh, like when I was getting into wrestling, uh, I like English catches catch can, the, the technical style, and looks like a dance. You know, a lot of people weren't into that because it's kind of bo- They said it was boring. It's like, no, this is fantastic. You know, you know, so it is what it is. Some yeah. people don't like Lucha Libre because it's a little too phony, acrobatic, but it's incredible. You know, I so, love Lucha Libre. I yeah. mean, that's to me, and that's also, I guess, because I'm Hispanic, but. I love the masks. I love the whole thing. Uh, like Josh Barnett hates it because it's like, why are people standing outside waiting for you to jump on them? I'm like, 
Because it's part of the show. I like <laughs> the hybrid style of everything. Because like a lot of people with the creating this hybrid style, they kind of eliminate things that are like, you know what I mean? Like they'll eliminate the standing out there of the lucha and do something else, but then still get that lucha aspect in it. So it's like the hybrid, the hybrid connecting of it all has been kind of cool. You know? Samoa Joe does it well where it, like if somebody does a high spot, he does that walk away. Yeah. My God, I, he that's, ain't one of catch my, you. that's one of my favorite things. <laughs> like, oh, there you are. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's see. I wanted to talk a little bit more about like some of the things that are happening in the, in the world of wrestling with you. Uh, one of those things is Mr. L.A. Knight. I know he was a big uh, player here in the local scene yes. for a while. Did you wrestle Eli Drake? I We had a random one-on-one match. Uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood was trying to uh, break into San Francisco market. Uh, we partnered up with this uh, piece of shit dude who uh, took us for a bunch of money. There's a lot uh, of those in the yeah, pro wrestling scene. Uh, he can scene. go fuck himself. Uh, I'm not even going to say his name. Uh, but we did this show at a, uh, at a food truck uh, thing and he wrestled in front of this uh, crowd and in food trucks and uh, it was a lot of fun. I remember, uh, I think he said he was going to do something where he was going to like drape me across the rope, you know, where they kind of put your suplex and then he puts you over something yeah. first. And I was like, man, don't do that to me. This ring sucks. It hurts. And then mid-match he does it and I'm like, you piece of shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> they were chuckling and laughing in there, man. And it was, it was a fun, it was a fun match. Um, uh, he was Sean Ricker at the time. Oh, uh, not even Eli Drake. That yeah. Was before that. Um, him teaming with, uh, with Cage uh, with Percy Pringle as their manager, his natural selection was awesome. I didn't even know that. I, I found out about that later on. I, yeah. He was a, a, a Percy guy. They were awesome. They had great feuds with the Rock Nest Monsters, uh, Yuma and Kevin Martinson. Uh, they, they were great. They were a great team. And Percy Pringle was awesome. What do you think? Because, uh, I mean, when I saw him as Eli Drake at the Globe here with, I think I think it was, P- no, it wasn't Impact. PWG. It was an Impact. It was a local show. I don't think it was, was it a championship wrestling. It wasn't championship wrestling. I mean, it wasn't PWG. I don't think it was bar wrestling either. Uh, but I went there with Andy Williams. We actually sat and, and watched the show, and he was there. And he, but he was doing the exact, you know, the LA night thing. But it was Eli Drake, and he was that. Like, what happened to where it finally clicked? Because even I saw the star when I was there in person. Uh, but the crowd wasn't even that much into it. Like some people were, but it wasn't what it is now. Mm-hmm. What is it that that makes that switch over? That makes somebody pop like that? I don't know. No, I don't know. I guess if you would have figured it out, you'd be at that. You'd be at the LA night. Sometimes it's uh, it's time and place, and uh, being somewhere where you're celebrated. Hmm. As opposed to just kind of there, you know what I mean? I guess, yeah, man. Because yeah. it's it's just weird to me. Because like I said, like I saw it, and it was basically the same thing he's doing. That's not, and yeah, being the catchphrase I got over was not the one I expected. Because he had a bunch of catchphrases when he was at Hollywood. Uh, he he had this move that he called the Gravy Train, and he called himself the Gravy Daddy. Uh, and he, <laughs> well, I can the, see why that's the, not the, the one. I, that shit was funny to me. <laughs> I I I loved it. Uh, the I gravy daddy yeah. sounds very sexual. He was, uh, <laughs> the dummy button I thought was hilarious. Him calling people the dummies dummy. was funny. Well, that was the yeah was in there, right? Wasn't it like dummy? But yeah. I think they were trying to get dummy over more than that. Yeah. yeah, I think he just kept saying yeah. So you say it enough, eventually it'll catch on. That's true. You and know? it's all it's it's an easy one word like the what. And, yeah. You know, I guess yeah. that makes sense. Fans, fans like one words. Yeah, it's anything that they can sing along or or yell back at the crowd. See, maybe that's what you need. You need a you need something that people can yell back at you. Yerp, yerp. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm I, I always felt like when I saw him like taking off, I'm like, oh, we'll see. Like about time, about time. People yeah. saw the thing I saw. He saw what we all saw out here. He saw what Dave Marquez saw out here for championship years wrestling. and years ago. Are you still doing championship wrestling? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I am a producer there. Producer. I have a mainstay there. Uh, I love performing for them. Uh, I am the one of the men behind the Derby City show, so I write the show and appear on the show in Louisville, Kentucky. Nice. Uh, I have a little thing going over there with Brian Myers where I owe him 10 grand. Uh, <laughs> so you ain't getting your 10 grand, bud. Mm-mm. I wouldn't give you the 10 grand. No, hell no. Hell no. Uh, when's the next show for that? 
right now we're a little bit of a hiatus. We're we're uh, we're, we're figuring some stuff out to make a, a big game plan going into the end of the year and into next year. So okay. stay tuned, baby. Some good stuff. We're still putting out we're still putting out footage, a lot of best stuff, and we're going into the vault uh, with a lot of our coming up stuff. So stay tuned to see some old stuff because you're gonna see uh, L.A. Knight. In some yeah, of that stuff, yeah. I always found that interesting when they bring out footage. Like uh, Impact likes to do that, where they'll bring out like AJ Styles footage. We have AJ Styles footage. We have a real good match on, uh, on deck. It was him and Trent Beretta from a, a few years back. That was an incredible match. Yeah, we got some good stuff in the vault, man. Yeah. There is a Willie Maximo with Joe match in the vault that we have. We have a lot of uh, OG LA Night stuff. Uh, I think my match with David Arquette is uh, going to be uh, on there again. Nice. So that's going to be a lot of fun. You know. David Arquette, we need to get him back in the ring. <laughs> hey, you know, his, uh, his, when we did his Celebrity Family Feud, it's like all of us now are at AEW except him. <laughs> well, he was there, kind of. He, well, he did, what was it? He did Hey AEW and with our hey buddy w, RJ. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it'd be cool to see him back in there, at least for one more. He needs a retirement match, I think. <laughs> for the, <laughs> for the WC WCW. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on the line. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I always found that like that vault footage, like from impact and from you guys, like, I wonder if there was ever like, if there's somebody at WWE or AEW, there's like, oh man, fuck, they're using our star, uh, or, you know, even though it was there before, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I wonder if there's that resentment there. Maybe, but we're going <laughs> to, you know, everyone's going to use that to get a little, uh, eyes on them. You of know? course. Yeah, maybe that's of the name course. of the game. I mean, I want to see that AJ Styles, Trent Beretta. People, people sleep on Trent because he's, you know, Trent's, the, Trent's awesome. Yeah, they, Trent they, they, awesome. They, 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 he's doing the best friends thing, so it's more of a comedy thing too. But you know, look, they, they did a cool like the whole bloody angle that they did with the Blackpool Combat Club. Yeah, they're funny of. guys, but man, them and him and Chuck can go. Yeah, him and Chuck can go. I saw Trent and uh, Kenny Omega, I think, in New Japan, and go sixty minutes, and it was. Incredible! I'm like, who the fuck is this Trent guy? Yeah, no, Trent's amazing. Yeah, that's that's wild, man. But you know, again, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't put it past you to to make that transition into to being taken more seriously like they did. Like, if the best friends can fucking do it, <laughs> I think you can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's a what's a dream match for you in uh, AEW right now with the current roster? I'd love to wrestle Christian. I've always wanted to wrestle mm. Christian. He was one of my favorites growing up. Uh, I would like to wrestle Orange on television. I wrestled them on Dark, but I'd like to wrestle them on television because that man can go. Uh, yeah, we saw that crazy a, run that he did. Yeah, yeah. Um, Orange, uh, what would be a, a good story for you and Orange to get you in the ring together? Because hmm. he doesn't have the title anymore. Because it could be, you oh, know, yeah. it could have been a contender. I can, uh, I can start to bring up how badly dressed that denim is. <laughs> Who wears, that much? Tuxedo? Who wears that much denim? Come on, get out of here. <laughs> That'd be cool. I'd like to see you in orange. Uh, and you said Christian. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on Edge possibly joining the Ferrari? That'd be pretty cool. Pretty cool. You get them in the Hardys in there uh, now. That'd be something, right? I, I, I was I was throwing that rumor out there. Hardys, Edge and Christian, and the Dudleys, since they're active again. Oh, yeah, I saw that. But apparently the Dudleys fucked up my dream with uh, signing a deal with the Legends contract over there in, in WWE. Ugh. But I don't know how that works. I mean, if Bully Ray is still working Impact, like, what are the limitations the, there? Uh, the Legends deal is probably a lot more open. They could do whatever they want. Who knows? Dude, if they do a TLC match in AEW with the Dudleys, Edge, and Christian, and the Hardys, I mean, Woof, gonna someone's going to gonna die. But. Someone is passing away. <laughs> I also don't know if Christian would want to wrestle me because my dad is still alive. Oh. You know, and I know his whole thing is dead dads, so. Yep, yep. I like that new gimmick. I'm not going to lie. I, I thought at first, I'm like, man, that's a little rough, but Oof. it's become a thing. Yeah. Like even at press conferences, how's everyone's dad doing? <laughs> um, all right, moving on. The last thing uh, I had for you was dream tag partner. Since you've been tagging with some some people that you haven't tagged with before, is there someone that you want to start a tag team with? And if so, what would you call it? Woof! I have not thought about that. I mean, I like teaming with Ryan. I like being the wingman with Ryan. No, but that's an existing thing. Yeah, man, that's a good question. Who do you have good chemistry with? I think it'd be fun to tag with Scorpio Sky. There we go. What would you call that tag team? That I don't know. That I can't think at the top of my head. I just think it'd be a great tag team. Scorpio Sky and Pretty Peter Avalon. Hmm. Pretty Skies. (laughs) Skies over LA. Yeah, there we go. 
Um, all right, and then the last two stories. I, I mean, I had Dominic Mysterio here. I just wanted to mention that uh, the biggest heel in the company. He's over the biggest w- heel in wrestling. It's insane. He mm-hmm. can't even. I'm starting to think that they're putting his mic down when he talks now, because it's like you can't hear him. I'm starting to think someone in the back is just pulling the slider back down just a little <laughs> bit. Uh, that is, it. I never expect. I, mean, well, I don't know. I can't say I never did because when if when the when that faction first came about, I was singing his praises and everybody's like you're you're stupid that's stupid he'll never i'm like that's that's a future champion right there he's got a belt and he's got a belt now uh the the fucking mullet the whole thing with rhea ripley like i don't know man i get it i get it uh and then jade cargill leaving aw uh possibly going to wwe there was a picture i saw on the internet of her that looked like she was at the performance center, but then it was debunked. I don't know what's going on, but I, I wish her the best of luck. I think that she was a bigger star in AEW, and she might get squashed in WWE pretty quickly, but we'll see. She's a big star. She has got the potential. Yeah, she's incredible. And then the other rumor, which uh, it pains me to bring up because I have a history of not liking this person here on this show, but <clears throat> the rumors are that CM Punk might be showing up at Survivor Series because he did a commentary thing uh, at an MMA thing, and, he, and they asked him, like, wait, what are you doing these days? And he said, oh, I uh, got some time off for the next two months. And in two months, it's Survivor Series in Chicago. Wow, shocker. Uh, I hope... I hope it happens. I'm all for big moments in pro wrestling. Regardless of my personal feelings of a person, I want the business to do well. So I hope it happens because I think it'll be a big moment. Uh, But I wouldn't. It'll be something. something. Put them in there with Triple H. Let's let them. uh, Like, that's the thing, man. Like, I think all drama should be handled in the ring. Just fucking handle it. Just get in there. Like, he should have had a match with Jack Perry or whatever, Jungle Jack, and, and settle it in the ring. Uh, so hopefully maybe Triple H comes around and, and just uh, does one more retirement match. You know what? He, he can't comment on it. I'm just going to chill over He chill doesn't here. have any thoughts on this. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, dude, tell people what are your current dates? How's it looking? I know that tonight is dynamite. You're not. You're here. You're not there, obviously. But what's the next AEW match for you? Uh, in Stockton in a couple weeks. Then I'll also be in Houston. I believe they're both dynamite. Nice. Uh, you can catch me at Lucha Vavoom. Not this Friday, but I'm, I'm a mainstay there, baby. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, stay tuned. You can see me on Instagram.com, PPA, all day. I'm not on Twitter anymore. Just no. Instagram. So no that's where you can catch me. Oh, I, you know, I had this thought when we were, you were talking, and it went away. But you mentioned PP Ray, your old tag. Where is Ray Rosas? Who knows? No? Yeah, who knows? All right, all right. Is there beef? Is there heat? No. Okay. Who knows? I'm better solo. All right. Hey, fuck yeah. I was going to say, I mean, if there was some, like, desire there to bring him along for a tag, but... I tried. Ah. I mean, I did see him in uh, BTE, I think, at one point. I tried there, too. (laughs) Well... That's unfortunate, but I am very happy to see what your future holds for you. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, I will be rooting for you. I always will root for you. Thank you. Uh, do you have shirts, merch, anything that people can pick up? I want everybody to go and pick up my dude Mabson's PPA, Pretty Peter Avalon shirt. Man. Selfies, food, and pets on Instagram. He makes incredible music, incredible artwork on Instagram, and he made this incredible shirt. So go pick one up. You can find it through my Instagram. My boy Mabson makes some good stuff, so go buy this shirt. And then you can also check out uh, my AEW tees as well. Oh, yes. ShopAEW.com. Uh, if you're a frugal person like myself, you wait for sales during their pay-per-views to pick up uh, in bulk. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but, yes, go to ShopAEW.com, pick up some merch support. I think that's how we get him in bigger shows. If you start buying shirts, then people will be like, oh, there's interest. Let's do more. Hey, man. They love PPA. When my music, when my uh, sexy sax hits, that crowd goes wild. <laughs> well, brother, I love you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. <laughs>